Okay, so chapter four. In the Science of Being Great by Wallace D. Waddles. The Mind of God. There is a cosmic intelligence which is in all things and through all things. This is the one real substance. From it all things proceed. It is intelligent substance or mind stuff. It is God. Where there is no substance, there can be no intelligence. For where there is no substance, there is nothing. And remember what we have learned, that a thought in this substance produces the form of that substance. And whatever thought forms you are holding, you are literally embodying that mental picture that you are creating. You are embodying the thoughts which you are creating. Because there is only one substance, and this substance has embodied itself within all. And as we think, when this substance, this intelligence begins to think then it starts to move in form, starts to create the form, and starts to move in motions, okay, which is exactly what we do. Where there is no substance, there can be no intelligence. For, there is, for where there is no intelligence, there is nothing. Where there is thought, there must be a substance which thinks. Thought cannot be function. For function is motion, and it is inconceivable that mere motion should think. Thought cannot be vibration, for vibration is motion, and that motion should be intelligent is not thinkable. Motion is nothing but the moving of substance. Remember, motion is nothing but the mo movement of substance. And it's the only activity which this substance, this spirit substance, can do is think. Okay? And, and what is he saying? Motion is nothing but the moving of substance, and when we are thinking, we are setting our own substance into motion. If there is intelligent, if there be intelligence shown, it must be in the substance and not in the motion. Thought cannot be the result of motions in the brain. If thought is in the brain, it must be in the brain substance and not in the motions which the brain substance makes. Meaning that thought is not a product of brain, but brain is the result and function of thought, okay? But thought is not in the brain substance, for brain substance without life is quite unintelligent and dead. Thought is in the life principle which animates the brain in the spirit substance which is the real man. The brain does not think, the man thinks and expresses his thought through the brain. There is a spirit substance which thinks, just as the spirit substance of man permeates his body and thinks and knows in the body, so the original spirit substance, God, permeates all nature and thinks and knows in nature. And this original spirit substance that permeates all nature and thinks and knows in nature is the same original spirit substance that is in man, you. So in other words, he is basically saying, and there is a quote that I, I want to read from the Bible. Um, he said, Now the Spirit is the Lord, and wherever the Lord is, there is freedom. And there was another one. I can't quite remember how it is. But you are spirit. Okay? There is only one. Okay? One spirit. One life. One God. One substance. And this substance is you. You are this substance. You can think. You set things in motions. You have this this temple for creating in the material world. Nature is as intelligent as man and knows more than man. Nature knows all things. The all-mind has been in touch with all things from the beginning, and it contains all knowledge. Man's experience covers a few things, and these things man knows. But God's experience covers all the things that has happened that has happened that all the things that have happened since the creation, from the wreck of a planet or the passing of a comet to the fall of a sparrow. Basically saying this consciousness, this intelligence which is in all things, still knows all the things that had happened from billions, billions, millions, maybe even eternity ago. Remember, same thing with thoughts, okay? Thought vibrations, uh, the ideas, they're, they're, they're all floating around inside this, this, this infinite ocean of consciousness. And us, as our own individual personal consciousnesses, we have to create the specific, <laughs> a specific tuning 
fork within our own brain in order to correspond and be able to grasp that thought that the universe is casting out, at least bombarding us with, that you could say. Okay. Man's experience covers a few things, and these things man knows. But God's experience covers all things and all the things that God knows that has happened since their creation from the wreck of a planet or the passing of a comet to the fall of a sparrow. All that is in and all that has been are present in the intelligence which is wrapped about us and enfolds us and presses upon us from every side. Remember how we were saying about the ethereal solar fluid that we had gotten from our lovely book, You, when he talks about vibrations and energy and all that lovely stuff. Okay, everything we see happens... Okay, it, we all know that the sun is a source of life, okay? Even with setting our own cells into activity. Our cells come into activity by, the, by being hit by the sunlight. Okay, if we don't have sunlight, eventually we're just going to you know, die. The sun is the source of all life, okay? The sun represents immortality. The sun is where your spirit came from, okay? The sun, the energy, okay? The energy of the sun is what's responsible for creation of everything, okay? So, this energy that's being emitted from the sun, the earth is passing through it, pushing through it, also while vibrating or spinning on its own axis, setting all those vibrations and energy that is collecting from the sun as it's passing through its own ethereal uh, solar fluid, setting it in motion, spinning it around, causing even more vibrations and more creation to happen, okay? Remember, God is only static energy, a static consciousness. He just simply is. Everything you see in life and existence is di the dynamic form of this energy, the manifestation of that consciousness. This intelligence is present everywhere and is wrapped about us and enfolds us and presses upon us from every side. All the encyclopedias men have written are but trivial affairs compared to the vast knowledge held in the mind in which men live, move, and have their being. The truths men perceive by inspiration. Inspiration. Okay, there is one thing I also want to share about inspiration. When you're inspired to do something, that's how you know that God is urging you to do that thing. The infinite intelligence within you is urging you to move in that direction. Because not only is that the right time for it to happen, but that's going to help you get ultimately to where you need to go. And inspiration, what is inspiration? Inspiration is... Uh, a direct knowing in spirit. Okay. I had, um, in spirit, inspiration. Okay. The truths men perceive by inspiration through spirit are thoughts held in this mind. If they were not thoughts, men could not perceive them, for they would have no existence. And they could not exist as thoughts unless there is a mind for them to exist in. And a mind can be nothing else than a substance which thinks. Man is thinking substance, a portion of the cosmic substance. Remember, okay, so Wallace D. Waddles says a portion of the cosmic substance. You know, as we get into our book, you, okay, I know I can't really explain too much about it now, because there's going to be so much more detail as we read the actual chapter, but Charles talks about how personal consciousness is very similar to a tuning fork, that only when we're in tune with certain things, and I know I was just saying this earlier, only when we are in tune with certain vibrations and energy, even thoughts, can we only receive those things. If we're not in tune, it's almost going to be like it doesn't even exist, even if it's there. Okay, it's going to be like it doesn't exist because you're not in tune with it. Man is a thinking substance, a portion of the cosmic substance, but man is limited. While the cosmic intelligence from which he sprang, which Jesus calls the Father, is unlimited. All intelligence, power, and force come from the Father. They come from God, this universal consciousness. Jesus recognized this and stated it very plainly. Over and over again, he ascribed all his wisdom and power to his unity with the Father and to his perceiving the thoughts of God. Quote, My Father and I are one. End quote. This was the foundation of his knowledge and power. He showed the people the necessity of becoming spiritually awakened, of hearing his voice and becoming like him. 
He compared the unthinking man, who is the prey and sport of circumstances, to the dead man in a tomb, and besought him to hear and come forth. Quote, God is spirit. End quote. He said, quote, Be born again, become spiritually awakened, and you may see his kingdom. Hear my voice, see what I am and what I do, and come forth and live. The words I speak are spirit and life. Accept them, and they will cause a well of water to spring up within you. Then you will have life within yourself. End quote. Quote, I do what I see the Father do. End quote. He said, meaning that he read the thoughts of God. Quote, the Father showeth all things to the Son. End quote. Quote, if any man has a will to do the will of God, he shall know truth. End quote. Quote, my teaching is not my own but his that sent me, end quote. quote. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, end quote. quote. The Spirit shall guide you into all truth, end quote. We are immersed in mind, and that mind contains all knowledge and all truth. It is seeking and giving us this knowledge, for our Father delights to give good gifts to his children. The prophets and seers and great men and women, past and present, were made great by what they perceived from God, not by what they were taught by men. This limitless reservoir, okay, that is one thing that we need to do well to keep in mind. Okay? Great men are great because of what they were taught from God, and not from they were, what they were taught by men. And there is one thing I also want to add on to that. Okay? Sometimes God uses the work of other men in order to teach you because he is forever evolving himself, okay? As if we move along, and this information has already been discovered within the planet, okay, he's going to bring this information to you in one way or another, whether it's through somebody else, whether it's through a lesson for you, or whether it's through a book, okay? Depending on if you are ready to receive it. This limitless reservoir of wisdom and power is open to you. You can draw upon it as you will, according to your needs. You can make yourself what you desire to be. You can do what you wish to do. You can have what you want. To accomplish this, you must learn to become one with the Father, so that you may perceive truth, so that you may have wisdom and know the right ends to seek. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. The right ends to seek, and the right means to, re to use to attain those ends, so that you may secure power and the ability to use the means. In closing this chapter, resolve that you will now lay aside all else and concentrate upon the attainment of conscious unity with God. Quote, Oh, when I am safe in my sylvan home, I tread on the pride of Greece and Rome, and when I am stretched beneath the pines where the evening star so holy shines. I laugh at the lore and pride of man, at the sophist schools and the learned clan. For what are they in all their high conceit, when man in the bush with God may meet? End quote. When man in the bush with God may meet. I laugh at the lore and pride of man, at the sophist schools and the learned clan. Man. For what are they in their high conceit when man in the bush with God may meet? I can do all things through Christ, through God who strengthens me. Concentrate upon the attainment of conscious unity with God. So, affirmation of the day. I and my Father are one. Jesus was a man, a manifestation of God, and so are all people. He said to himself, we could do all the things that he can do if we would only but listen and understand. We are all living in the same universal energy, the same universal consciousness, this intelligence which created all within itself. We are all embodiments of this one, one original spirit. Okay, and your consciousness, your own individualization, your own Christ individualization of this spirit. 
that is how we that is how we have been given dominion over our lives because we actually have the ability to live in disharmony with our creator we actually have the ability to not have a relationship with our father you know and we also have the ability to have one a great one and we know that <laughs> we have no reason to fear for God is with us never tell anyone the sky's the limit because there are footprints on the moon right now man You know, the reason why I make these videos is I want to inspire people. I want to share information with people. And I also wanted to take what I have developed within me over the last few years of my life because I see how it's been helping me. And what we want for ourselves, we want for all because we know what we give for ourselves, we get for all. Because who I am today, who I am tomorrow, and who I was yesterday, okay, affects every single person, okay. Whether they psychologically let it, okay, you have that power to psychologically let it affect you. But regardless of that part of the aspect, okay, there's still the part of cause and effect, okay. Taking these certain actions leads to other people taking certain actions, okay. If you take a different action, you may meet somebody else. You may come into uh, contact with somebody else. You might learn something new. Okay, if you didn't take that specific action and took another road, okay, you're, you might have met somebody different. Okay, all these things is so important with what we are doing because what we are doing now, what we are saying now, what we are even thinking now is creating the next hour, the next two hours, the next three, maybe four hours. It's creating tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. It's going to be creating what we're going to do within the next 10 minutes, okay? Life is a state of consciousness. We must grow internally. Remember, all things are made from within. No things ever come from without. Remember, it has to have its beginning in mind and has its end in form. That being said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. This is Corey Anderson. That is the end of Chapter 4 on the mind of God. And if you liked my video, thank you for watching. And if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for actually spending the time to watch this with me. Because, <laughs> viewer, you are a creator. You are created to do great things. You have the power to create your own reality. That's that's immense right there. Done. That being said, yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys on the other side of the galaxy.